Okay. Hi, everyone. Great to see all of you. My name is Jean Biter. I'm with Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper, and I'm the program manager of the Buffalo Blue Way program, which you'll hear a little bit about this evening. It's really nice to have all of you here. Thanks so much for joining us on this Wednesday evening um, where the sun decided to come out. Didn't see that coming. So um, hopefully you all have had a chance to get outside and get a little bit of fresh air between various Zoom calls and team calls and phone calls and however else we communicate with each other these days. So it's great to see all of you. So thanks again for coming. Um, I just wanna do a few introductions, a couple of people that are in the room and uh, I'll give a little intro about Waterkeeper and about the Buffalo Blue Way. And then we'll turn it over to our consultants, Tom and Hannah, who are gonna take us through the reason why we're all here, which is to see, get that first, um, sneak peek at the plans for uh, Seneca Bluffs. So, and if I pause for a second, it's just because I'm letting people into the room. So I apologize in advance. So um, again, I'm Jean Biter. Uh, Catherine, I'll pass it off to you. Hi, I'm Catherine Winkler. I am um, a senior program manager with Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. And I'm really focusing right now on all of our the suite of Buffalo Blue Way projects. One of them is being Seneca Bluffs. Great, thanks, Catherine. Um, I'm going to pass it over to the county because, as we know, Seneca Bluffs Park is a county park, which is fantastic. The county has been a great partner um, with all the wonderful work happening along the Buffalo River and specifically at their parks as well. Um, so, Troy, do you want to introduce yourself, and then Kristen? Sure, absolutely. Good evening. Thank you for having us, obviously, and uh, thank you to the Waterkeeper. This entire Blue Aid initiative is fantastic. It's it's a huge benefit to us in Erie County, but everyone in Western New York. So thank you for having us, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. And Kristen? I think Kristen's probably needed, but Kristen oh. works through the Department of Environment and Planning. and. She's been a really great partner to work with, uh, along with Troy and the rest of the county. There she goes. Here Sorry, she guys, goes. my screen was frozen for a moment. <laughs> Catherine already introduced you, so yeah. you can. Oh, see perfect! I guess we're good to go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine just jumped right in there. <laughs> I paused. You did pause. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so, a little bit about Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. We're a local nonprofit uh, that serves the our larger Niagara River watershed. Um, we've been around for about 30 years, really focused on the restoration efforts of the Buffalo River. Um, and now we're starting to branch out into other waterways as well, which is really exciting. Um, we do a lot in the community, everything from living shorelines projects to uh, community engagement. We just had our first installment of the spring sweep this past Saturday, um, where a handful of us actually were at Red Jacket together cleaning up that park. Um, and then there'll be the second installment of the spring sweep uh, this coming Saturday. So I don't know if there's still spots open, but if you're interested in getting out this Saturday and helping clean up some various, some location uh, in our Niagara River watershed, feel free to check out our website and you can learn more about that. Um, if some of you may remember, we, we typically do our spring sweep as one big like giant volunteer event. And with COVID and just, you know, wanting to make sure that we keep everyone safe and everything is good, uh, we split it up into two weekends. And I think that seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, I'll, I can just say firsthand, seeing people in person that like I've only been seeing in these little boxes was pretty amazing on Saturday. And I think everyone else that was there, there was about 20 of us. I think everyone else was just like, this is so great. I'm outside with other people and we're doing something. <laughs> like, Thank goodness. So um, we've been really happy just with all the support that we've received for the, for the sweeps and there'll be more, um, cleanups happening. We've actually got one specifically for the Buffalo River that's going to be at the end of June. So it's like that last weekend in June and then into July. And again, just head to bnwaterkeeper.org and you'll get lots more information about all the sweeps. Um, we're doing a third sweep in September and that's along the Skajakwita. So lots of good stuff happening there. 
So I just want to take a couple minutes and talk about the Buffalo Blue Way. So the Buffalo Blue Way is an initiative um, that we're undertaking with support from Empire State Development. And really the sole purpose of the Buffalo Blue Way initiative is to provide more public water access. So as we all know, we as Western New Yorkers have been cut off from our waterways for quite some time um, through a whole series of events. And so we are now really excited that we are able to get people back to the water, whether that is kayaking or canoeing, whether that's biking along the water or walking along our waterways, or just sitting on a bench and watching all the incredible wildlife make its way through. Um, we've got birds always flying around, there's deer and beaver and all sorts of critters um, that call the Buffalo River home. And so we're trying to do our very best to make sure that that habitat is maintained and is protected, as well as encouraging all of us as part of the Western New York community back out to the water. Because um, as we all know, there's something about water that just calms us and soothes us. So especially during these strange times, we've found that many more people are visiting the county parks that are just all the county parks in general. And I'm sure, you know, Troy's got some great anecdotes about that, but, you know, specifically along the Buffalo River as well, right? Like they're going to Red Jacket, people are going to Seneca Bluffs, people are going to Ohio Street, like they're just seeking out these spaces um, that get us closer to water. So with the Buffalo Blue Way initiative, um, in terms of, you know, infrastructure in the ground, we have been really fortunate to be able to put in a brand new ADA uh, kayak launch at Riverworks. We've also done a handful of improvements at Wilkinson Point out on the Outer Harbor. Um, and now we're starting to work on improvements uh, and upgrades at Seneca Bluffs, at uh, Red Jacket, and at Ohio Street Boat Launch. Ohio Street Boat Launch is the one that's currently under construction. And it's really going to be, at the end of the summer, it's going to be just this beautiful spot to be, to be on the Buffalo River. Um, there'll be this cantilevered fishing pier that goes out into the water, which is just gonna be incredible, as well as an improved kayak launch um, that if anyone is a kayaker or you know, likes to go out in a boat and you've tried to at Ohio Street, you know that it's usually pretty jammed up with driftwood and all sorts of debris. And so part of that Ohio Street uh, boat launch uh, improvement project is to put some deflectors in the water so that we can, you know, keep everything sort of moving down downstream. Um, so hopefully there won't be as much buildup at the kayak launch. So we're really excited about that. And then uh, Seneca Bluffs is going to be the next one on the docket in terms of uh, having construction happening and having improvements being made. So um, I just want to pause for a second. Catherine, did I miss anything? Nope, you covered okay. up some of it. Perfect. All right. So then without further uh, ado, I want to pass it over to Tom and Hannah, who are going to take us through the plans for Seneca Bluffs. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Jean. I guess, Hannah, if you can share your screen and get the slides up. And it's actually Tom and Hannah and Ryan. Yeah. Um, we have Ryan Davis from Anchor QEA working with us. Um, Ryan's a coastal engineer. He's also working on the Ohio Steep Street project. So what we're trying to do is bring all these um, riverfront access points together into a cohesive network. And uh, this that's a really exciting opportunity. So. You know, sometimes these Zoom meetings, especially these the evening ones, feel like hard work, but uh, this project doesn't. I mean, this project is just really exciting to work on. We love to think about it, talk about it, and we're getting very excited about the prospect of actually building it. All right, next slide. So I think everybody on this call probably knows the area we're talking about. It's the beautiful Seneca Bluffs Natural Habitat Park in the city of Buffalo, along the Buffalo River, um, just kind of the north side of Seneca Street, as you see on this map. 
Um, it is owned and operated by Erie County Parks. So they were a really important partner for us in this whole undertaking. And, you know, um, we're, yeah, where we're are you going? in a collaboration with them to make a park that'll be um, sustainable and maintainable over the long term. So that's that's a really important goal for us. Um, the uh, little infographic down in the bottom right just traces some of the many um, efforts that have be been made at the park already over the years. And it's a really fantastic um, continuous chain of efforts um, to improve the natural resources there, uh, including there's been invasive species removal and um, establishment of native plant communities. Um, some sh shoreline stabilization with partners, including uh, Erie County, uh, as well as the Corps of Engineers and others. Um, so what we're about to undertake now in terms of improvements at Seneca Bluffs is really part of a long chain of improvements um, that just keep making things better. Next slide. So um, yeah, you know, we really had to bite the bullet and go out on kayaks, get photos from the water. That was a real struggle for the folks who were involved in that. Um, but uh, here's, a, here's a few photos of the existing conditions. Um, existing conditions inventory and analysis is a big part of our upfront work. Um, and that, in, that involves compiling all the existing data, reports, and plans uh, that relate to this project site as well as spending time on the site ourselves and compiling some of our own data specifically for this project. Uh, we had one of our biologists do a shoreline vegetation survey um, along our project area. So we really understood uh, the um, vegetation that it had established and what we needed to try to pay attention to and um, you know, really mold our design around the resources that are already out there. Uh, we also conducted um, topographic survey, survey on the land side and bathymetric survey capturing the topography of the river bottom um, for the water zone. Uh, in addition to that, we did some geotechnical investigation, um, which turned into quite an adventure because just the way the timing worked, uh, we were into some of our kind of uh, waterside borings um, in December, and then we did hit ice, believe it or not, there was a time where there was ice out there this winter, um, but we got it done and we have enough data to move forward with the um, shoreline enhancements and then the, de the debris deflection at this site that uh, Ryan will talk to you a little bit more uh, a, few, a few slides from now. All right, next one. So, um, Kristen is on the line from Erie County and kind of right, right in tandem with this project, um, we worked with her in Erie County to put in a, a conceptual plan, a feasibility study and a grant application for uh, stormwater based improvements at the parking lot, um, streetscape and trailhead area of the park. So the idea was just to make a better interface um, with the public realm, um, tie into some of the active transportation improvements that are happening along Seneca Street and really focus on applying best practices for a sustainable design and green infrastructure at Seneca Bluffs. Um, so these images are from that project uh, which again is at this point just a grant application, but we are eagerly awaiting to hear whether Erie County is going to get some funding to implement some of these improvements, which would tie right together and mutually support um, what the water keeper is trying to do. All right, next slide. So the list on the lower right hand corner are really sort of some of the objectives or the criteria um, that, that we use to evaluate our design concepts and our ideas moving forward. Um, I will say that we've had several meetings and interacted with a lot of stakeholders to get where we are right now, uh, including obviously Erie County, but also um, DEC and the Corps of Engineers, the Department of State, the agencies that will be involved in permitting this project are now part of the process um, and we're taking their input into things as we go. 
Um, so some of the things that we're looking for are to minimize adverse environmental impacts, um, both the temporary ones during construction and probably more importantly, the long-term impacts, um, maximizing environmental enhancements, including biodiversity, air quality, soil and water conservation, um, and the integrity of the riparian environment. Um, we do look at probable construction costs, <clears throat> well as probable maintenance and operation costs. Um, it's very important for us to build something that can be cared for. Uh, that's probably you know, the number one rule of stewardship. If you're gonna put something out there, make sure there's the ability to care for it long-term. So we're working very closely with Erie County Parks um, as we develop ideas for the improvements at Seneca Bluffs. <clears throat> um, accessibility and inclusive design are very important to us. Um, there are other points, as Gene mentioned, there's other points in the system that have um, fully ADA compliant um, water access points. Uh, this will not be one of them. Um, we're emphasizing inclusive design to make sure it's, it is as user-friendly to as many different kinds of people and different user groups as possible and pretty much whatever your mobility level, you should become able to come here and enjoy the park. Uh, certain parts of it near Seneca Street will be technically ADA compliant, but as you move back further into the natural and environment, um, that is not a set of criteria we're necessarily holding ourselves to. And when Hannah talks about the concept design, we'll get a little bit more into that. Um, the uh, potential learning stewardship and educational opportunities. Um, and as you can see from this rendering, the idea of bringing the park into the neighborhood, bringing the neighborhood into the park, and just creating a different sense of place for Seneca Bluffs, we think would be um, a huge win for this project. It's a very special place, and we want it to be more welcoming and more inviting um, to visitors. Um, that's enough, let's keep going. Yeah. All right, so that kind of sets the stage on what we're trying to achieve and who we're working with and how we've gotten to this point. Um, we're at a really exciting place right now because we have a concept design that pretty much all the stakeholders are in agreement with and would like to see move forward. Uh, there's a lot of details that still need to be worked out. This is really the very early stages of design, but um, we're excited to share with you where we are now. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it over to Hannah to talk about the concept design. Thanks, Tom. So I'm gonna get into it and kind of move through the site from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So moving from Seneca Street back into the park. Um, we have the park oriented to the east. So that's why there's, um, a little bit of the direction there I'm going to head. Um, but we want to talk about some of the improvements leading from Seneca Street, like Tom said, some of those higher visibility, um, the accessible emphasis um, in getting people to see and interact with the with the riverfront. And then moving back into the park where we have some media in some level of visibility um, around the kayak area, um, a little bit more of a naturalized approach um, that's appropriate to enhancing the habitat and balancing the recreational enhancements. And then moving further into the park where there's more low intensive um, kind of smaller improvements just to enhance the ways people can go and, and walk through the park. Um, so I'm going to take us through that, but this is an overview of the concept. And this ties into, again, that Erie County GI feasibility study, which would be at the entrance of the park. So looking at the area near Seneca Street, um, we had a few ideas to get people drawn into the park beyond the parking lot improvements themselves. And that includes an overlook feature um, similar to the Ohio Street. So we can create a unified approach um, to the Blue Way system and interaction with the Buffalo River. Um, that would include some uh, ADA accessible fishing components like the railing. Um, it would be similar to the Ohio Street features with the railing and the boardwalk material. 
Um, we have a, a hierarchy of path systems and this one being some sort of flexi pave material which is ADA compliant and can bring in some creative designs when it comes to the pavement to kind of visually emphasize that this is a destination and a place in the neighborhood that people want to come to. Um, we have a fisherman's walk. Um, while we were on site, we talked to and saw fishermen right along the edge of the river. So we wanted to enhance that capability for, um, again, all levels of access. Um, so we have like a larger pathway boardwalk kind of coming through into the park, leading into that flexi paved pathway. We also saw some opportunities for some um, native meadow species establishment. Um, we saw some invasive species while we were going along the railing that exists along the river. Um, we think this could also enhance kind of the entrance and including some native um, tree species that visually aid in people entering the park. Um, one piece of this is, is adding in walkways along the river and the other is getting people into the park itself. So we have that dual pathway system, um, the other being the restoration of the existing um, stone dust. So we would put that down at a, at a 10 foot wide distance so people could come and access um, into the park to the kayak launch. Um, and it gives you some room to pass people to bring kayaks comfortably into the park. Um, we've learned these pathways and that we um, would assume would be attracted to people in the neighborhood um, have higher volumes, especially during COVID to have those larger pathways where we assume there's gonna be more traffic to allow for that distancing and that um, group configuration for comfortable passing. Um, we were also looking at a few different site amenities that are going to be included in the Blue Way system, including um, a bench feature um, that would be along this segment, and then also some kayak racks for storage at the parking lot, and then you'll also see some at the kayak launch area. So moving um, northward into the site, or, or right on the page, um, this kayak area is a little bit more of our there's some visibility from the bridge, there's visibility from the parking lot, but it's in that intermediate portion of the park where we want to balance the recreational improvements with some of like the natural immersion and the habitat and really kind of getting out of the feel of the street and the city and into that naturalized environment. So this will include more of the stone dust pathways along the river that lead from that restor restored stone dust trail into the park. Um, it will include some site amenities that revolve around nature play, so getting people to interact with their environments with salvaged material on site. When we were walking around, there were several downed trees or um, materials that we, we could use um, in, organ in an organized fashion for kids to play on, um, for adults to play with their kids on. Um, we, it kind of is a portion of play that adds to the recreational and traditional playground feature at the park to a little bit more of a naturalized approach that belongs in this environment and is fun for people of really all ages to interact with. It can also serve as seating and a rest area. So it, it has that dual function, um, but being able to bring people in here and play with the natural site features is a really important part of this. Um, moving into the kayak and paddle point launch area, um, we want to have some improvements on the access to that area and then also the um, approach into the water. So I'm going to have Ryan come back to this in a moment with some of our um, debris deflection and protective structures that are going to be around that kayak feature. Um, this was a location that we did see some debris accumulation. Um, we did see a little bit more on the north part of the site as well. So we wanted to look at some of the shoreline features and some potential um, stabilization features, but then also improving that um, habitat, the riparian habitat um, between the river and on land. Um, so that could include some native species establishment, um, potentially some root wads or kind of features that link between that aquatic and on land environment. Um, you know, we want to get people in this area, they're really getting into the river. This is, uh, you know, potentially more immersion in that um, riverfront area. So um, creating some unique seating opportunities like ledge rocks um, where people can sit 
you know, right on the river and, and look out into it. There's some really beautiful areas that we observed when we were along the um, bank of the river. And then also having some grouping areas with seating stones um, for people to interact and, and get together around. Um, you know, we have to think about this site as a destination, um, not only from the water, but also on land. So people could be stopping here, um, storing their kayak, hanging out in the park for a while, and then moving back eastward or uh, westward on the Blue Way Trail, since this is the easternmost point. Um, so creating those amenities for people at the park and then people stopping on the river is really important. Um, additionally, we're gonna look at a few different areas for informal fishing access. So while the overlook would serve to allow people to fish off of that with the ADA accessible railing features, um, we also have the ability to create these informal access points to the river with ledge rock. Um, from this area. So that would be kind of input into the slope and people could come down and kind of fish in these strategic areas that are separated from other recreational uses. Um, so kind of trying to divide those types of use between seating, walking, fishing, um, and viewing the river. Hey, Hannah, yeah. I'll, I'll just add that, you know, one comment we've had is we want people to enjoy the river, interact with the river, get close to the river but not necessarily jump in the river. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, we will be conscious of that balance point with our design as we move forward. And as we get more into design development and detailed design, there, there's responses to that. So we can um, encourage people to behave responsibly and in the right way and still let them enjoy the environment. Thanks, Tom. No, that's a great point. That's one consideration we're making, especially in like the ledge rock seating area, and then also having these informal access points to the river for fishing and some pads along the riverbank. I'm going to turn it over to Ryan Davis. He's working with us from Anchor QEA, um, and he is taking a closer look at some of the debris deflection structures that you see um, just above the kayak launch area. Thanks, Anna. Um, as, um, as Jean mentioned earlier, um, with the Ohio Street um, project um, that we're also working on, there's a tendency for debris to accumulate um, over the over the winter time, especially this time of year, which makes using the um, the um, the launch actually almost impossible. And we do know in this area too, we have debris that accumulates. Um, some of it is is actually just a little bit upstream of this this um, particular image that we're looking at here. Um, but it, it, it actually goes both ways. It comes down during high flows, but down under low flows, can, a sage event can push it back up onto the site. So you kind of see uh, a conceptual configuration there. It's a little more detailed on the, um, the inset image on the left-hand side. Um, and what we're trying to do is, is, is keep the material just out in the main stem of the river. So it's moving back and forth um, away from the launch um, while providing sufficient space to be able to get your uh, kayak or canoe out into, into the river. Um, right now, you can kind of see uh, the design looks a little bit different. The downstream side is more of a, a rock feature that's keyed into the bank. And then the upstream feature is, is, a, is a little bit of a rock feature keyed into the bank that also has a floating um, debris, I'm, I'm sorry, floating boom um, component to it. So we're still evaluating that. As Tom mentioned earlier, we did take some um, geotechnical data. So we're looking at um, whether the actual uh, river substrates can support that type of um, uh, material um, or if we need to do something a little bit different. So we're still going through that, but conceptually you can see what we're looking at is, um, is something on both the downstream and upstream side so that there's access um, um, at all times um, for the boaters. Great, thank you, Ryan. Um, so yeah, like, like Ryan said, we're taking another look at that and we are um, currently corresponding with the agencies to look at that design for the in-water features along with the on-land features as part of our technical advisory committee. So that work will be ongoing as we move from design development into um, our, our design documents. So the last part of this site that we wanted to talk about was the north end. 
um, in, in the right side on this diagram, um, looking at a few of the different features that already exist on site and trying to um, add in pathways where people can interact along the water and really capture these views that we noted when we were on site. Um, so it, back into this piece of the site, it's really that low visibility, um, really immersed in this park. Um, it's almost disconnected from the, from the road itself in the city or really around nature. So um, these are the least intensive improvements and it would include more of a natural surface path, a mode path that exists on site, um, but again, allows people to get closer to the river and, and have those views. Um, and then again, those um, fishing and, and water access points for um, fishing in the river. So um, this is more the least intensive part of the site, but we still think it's important for people to be able to access this area. So moving from here, um, so we have our concept design and we wanted to look at um, the schedule with everybody just so you know, you know, when is everything happening? How are we moving along in this project? Um, so what we're looking at is a construction in April of next year. And from this point on, moving into design development to get to that point. Um, and then having the project completed by the end of next year. So that is our project timeline as it stands right now. Um, and I'll turn it back to Tom for some last remarks. Yeah, sure. So yeah, this, this is um, very much an outline schedule that's a little bit fluid right now. We're on a pretty good track. What's really important is that we get all our permit applications in by the end of the summer. Um, because there's, you know, more or less a six month turnaround period for the permits we require. And then that'll let us get to bidding it next winter. And as Hannah mentioned, getting out basically a year from now, starting construction and then being done by the fall of 2022. Um, so far, all the indications point to we're on track for that. Um, and, you know, we, we've got good uh, communication established with the permitting agencies. We'll keep them in the loop as our design develops. And, you know, we'll do the best we can and just have everybody work together towards uh, getting this built next year, which will be really exciting. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Hannah and Ryan. Um, I just wanted to say that from a project management perspective, it's been great working with this team and also working with particularly Erie County and all of the stakeholders that have been part of this project. Several months back, we um, hosted a series of Blue Way site um, public meetings just to gather feedback. And um, Hannah and Tom were able to take that information and really bring it to this project. And, they have done such an amazing job of tying in everyone's wants and needs. Well, you can't make everyone, you know, get what they want. I really feel like the, the, we're hitting every aspect of this. It's not just about kayaking, it's not just about fishing, it's not just about, you know, nature. It's combining everything together. And I think really working together as this team has made this project um, incredible. and. In my opinion, it's going to be such a boom to Seneca Street or South, sorry, Seneca Street area, but South Park um, and Seneca Bluffs. But, you know, really right now, what we want to do is get everyone's comments on these designs and let us know what you think. Um, these are not locked in stone, even though we've had a lot of technical advisory committee meetings and everything. We do want to still hear from everyone just to get your feedback, you know. I don't know where you all live, but I'm guessing you all live pretty close or you've used this park a lot. And the reason we're doing this is to bring people to the water and to be able to enjoy these um, projects. So we would love to hear from you. Feel free to unmute yourself and speak up if you have any questions or comments and Hannah can go back and forth between the different slides for you. I. It's my name is Simon Houston. I, I'm not sure if, uh, I don't want to speak out to her if I had her hands up. Nope, uh, go right ahead, Simon. Okay. Well, I, I live I live nearby, kind of. I mean, I live closer to Kaz uh, Park, but, you know, all parks are the same in my eyes. Um, and this would be quite an amazing, um, quite quite an amazing enhancement because I, I do go to Seneca Bluffs from time to time. 
And I guess really the one of the most unappealing things is the front of it, you know, truth be told, um, you know, it almost like, kind of like, you know, a lot, I do a lot of walking actually. Um, and walking in front of the gravel with no, absolutely no trees or whatever is overbearing. A lot of sun, it would be great if we could, yes, definitely get more trees, get more shade so that the people who just are just walking through feel like they're part of the park, not just walking through a parking lot. Um, I speak about parking though, I wasn't sure. I imagine you guys are including like, you know, bike racks and everything, correct? Too, because I do intend to haul my kayak on a bike. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, so that feature we have um, just to the left of like the number one, um, it kind of looks like a, like a rectangle with some squares on each corner. So that would be part of the bike rack structure. Um, as part of the GI feasibility study, these structures would be um, angled so that they would capture the, the roof runoff into the rain gardens that are nearby. So that would be at the picnic pods and then also that bike shelter. Thank you guys. Yeah, Simon, Simon, we hope to have covered bicycle parking for you as well as kayak racks. So if, if all goes according to plan, you'll be set up pretty well. This is John Jaros. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. From the Niagara Muskie Association. And uh, I live in Lakeview, about two miles from um, the fishing access site on the Old Lake Shore Road. And um, the fishermen have kind of gotten uh, pushed out by all the kayakers, which to me is okay. But uh, they've, uh, you know, you go there on a Saturday on a nice day or even a Sunday, and you can't even find a place to park. And because there are so many people kayaking. So I have a couple of questions on the kayaking in the parking area. How far? Uh, of a walk is it from the parking lot to the kayak launch? And then the second question is, are there any plans to have um, an upgraded kayak launch like there is at Ellicott Creek uh, Park or at uh, the East River Marsh on Grand Island? You know, where there's the, uh, they have the rollers and the handrails and that would be more inviting to the people. Um, it, it looks like, you know, from in my area, uh, the the um, the kayakers the kayaking is really taking taken off, and it took me two and a half months to get to uh, order a kayak in because nobody had them in stores. So a lot of people are going out there kayaking, and um, you know if you want to get people in the water, you have to make it uh, somewhat convenient, or else unfortunately they'll make it convenient themselves because people have taken over. Uh, they've gotten away from the gotten off the parking area at the Old Lake Shore Road and encroached on uh, some of the grasslands and the field or the uh, the wooded areas and things like that and just set up, uh, just made into a parking lot and launched their kayaks. Uh, those are great comments, John. I, I can hit on a couple of them and maybe give you some answers. Um, so this, this particular blue way access point, we'll call it sort of an intermediate level of access. So it'll be a stabilized and clearly identified put in point for the kayaks, um, but it won't be ADA compliant. It won't have the rollers. Um, it'll be sort of a walk-in type of situation, but a stable one, one that's not gonna erode or be um, unsafe in any way. Okay. Um, you know, we, we consider the fishermen one of the prime user groups here. So we're trying to, we're trying to accommodate them um, just alongside and in balance with all the other water users, including the kayakers. We think fishing is a really important activity to accommodate. So we're doing the same thing I think Hannah mentioned. We're trying to really improve um, a selection of uh, fishing points that are you know, relatively easy to get to and stable to um, to to fish on. Um, and you know, if those points are attractive, we think people will stay with those and probably have less impact to the overall environment by wandering off the trails and going to other spots. That's the strategy, um, and I, I think it'll be a really nice place to fish. Um, 
But you're right. I mean, as places get popular, uh, you have more user groups coming in, you have more numbers of people. That's a good thing. That's our goal is for people to enjoy the river. So, you know, our objective is to create an environment that can accommodate that and actually has a decent carrying capacity um, to let these people, to let everybody enjoy the river in their own way uh, without doing any damage. Well, I, I agree completely. You know, I mean, I like to see people on the river. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the environment, um, you know, takes, uh, takes a bit of a toll. It takes a bit of a toll on the environment uh, from sure. their use. And uh, when I was there uh, last year, you know, and, and there were only two parking spots left, and I went there to fish, which is, well, which is okay with me. You know, one of the kayakers um, said to me, he said, you know, two years ago, nobody even knew this place was here because it was strictly for fishermen. So I'm glad to see that, but, you know, it, but it does take a lot of kayakers and I'm, you know, and I was uh, wondering if it would be able to, to uh, accommodate a larger number um, of the water sports. I mean, people were going down there in their air mattresses and, and floating swimming pools and beach toys and everything else because they had made it into a, a, a swimming pool. And it's like Western New York has uh, rediscovered the waterways. <laughs> Something that we've known for years, us fishermen have known for years. The other, sure, the other, sure. the other comment I wanted to make was, um, um, you know, because I took a, I took a ride down there, and this place is very similar to the Harlem Road site. Are you familiar with that one, the access site, and that's a, that's a big um, steelhead fishing area. It's got a nice paved parking lot. Um, it has an un, it says kayak launch and it's an unimproved kayak launch. It's down a steep bank and you just have to kind of try to do your best, which is okay. But but it it has good fishing habitat for this for a steelhead run. It has a large pool and then upstream of the pool there's a lot of shallow riffles. Okay, and and during the during the spring and the fall steelhead run, I'll see uh, a lot of steelhead fishermen in that area and and the uh the steelhead will run all the way up to the blossom road dam which is there there that's the um the impassable on that on buffalo creek that's the point uh of impa the uh, impassable access so they're they're going to stop there and fishermen you know fish all along there um so is there any are there any plans, you know, and it's, it would really be altering the river of like putting boulders in or making, you know, fish holding areas within the river itself um, to, you know, to to bring the steelhead in? Because I, I think, I don't know if Buffalo Rod and Gun Club is still having, pen, has, still has their pen projects to have a steelhead run, but there are steelhead running up there and that's a big attractor to the fishermen. Yeah, that's a really great point, John, and I'm very familiar with Harlem Road, and I don't think as part of this project, we can really um, try to improve the river in the section um, for um, the fish rearing or provide additional habitat in the waterway, but we would love to talk to you about that, doing some sort of project um, closer to this area to help with those steelhead, because it's incredible when they start running. Yes, okay. Well, give me a call anytime, Catherine. <laughs> okay, sounds good. It's been a long time since I've seen you, so. Yeah, yes, it has. Well, you know, us <laughs> retired guys, you've got nothing else to do except fish. <laughs> yeah, the rest of us are on these calls all day. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, John, okay. for all of those wonderful comments. All right, um, I think, Wendy, you have some comments. Do you want to go next? Great. Sure. <laughs> um, so one thing that, that I've noticed along the edge, and first of all, I'm really excited to see there's an overlook there because there's some really cool birds that swim on that river. And it'll be really cool to be able to get out there and capture some picture of the birds, but also in that location. So kind of like points one, two, three, and four and five, there's a lot of um, tree of heaven growing an invasive tree. And I was wondering if you guys had plans for what to do with that grow that's growing there and how to get rid of it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, well, I'll, I'll say if, if there are invasive species within our project area, um, we will look to removing them as part of our construction. I mean, invasive species control is not the um, guiding part of this project, but it certainly is something that we can deal with uh, within our construction zone. And typically we do, um, you know, we're very careful about trying to reduce the intrusion that we cause of invasive species. But if we have the opportunity to roll a little invasive species control into the construction contract, uh, we will as part of site preparation and site restoration. And then awesome. the construction process will be very careful to have a um, invasive species management plan for you know where the soil gets disturbed, where it moves, how we clean off all of the equipment before they leave the site so we're not transferring invasives. Um, but the county does currently have a, um, a contract to do additional invasive species work at some of the natural habitat parks. So maybe we can um, also talk to them if the maybe they're popping up and we didn't see them last season, you know, because the way Buffalo River works, they can come up anywhere. So we'll definitely take a look at those as well. But unfortunately, some of the invasives are really pretty. So <laughs> yeah, right now, all of the yellow flower, I don't know what the name is, but it's in bloom in Seneca Bluffs. It looks so pretty, but it's not a native yeah. one. Maybe Kristen knows what it's called. It's like <laughs> lesser, lesser celandine. There it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. It's all over. It looks beautiful, but yeah. No. It's all over Como Park too. But yeah, it does <laughs> look pretty. And I would like to definitely ditto what Simon said. I know that's not really in the scope of the project, but I do. I alter my path when walking at Seneca Bluff. So I walk there almost daily with my dog and I don't go anywhere near Seneca Street because of how loud it is. So I've literally found a way to like alter my path. So I go along the grassy area um, and, and try to avoid being right next to Seneca Street because it's, it's awful, it's loud, it's fast. I feel like I'm gonna get run over when I'm there. So, and it's also not shaded, so. Right. Ultimately, what is the capacity for the, I mean, I, I really don't care about parking because I will never park at this place, but um, I will walk or bike. But what is the capacity, capacity what is the parking capacity going to go from? Because like right now it's a gravel, it's a big gravel lot. And as we have seen, it does actually get full, um, partly because actually people in the neighborhood, some of my neighbors, actually park their RVs or whatever in there. Um, yeah, yeah. And so like people will meld out, they'll, they'll, they'll figure it out later. But like, what is the park capacity gonna like turn from? Cause we are gonna dedicate a lot of this to landscaping which is a net positive for sure. But what is the numbers? Um, I'm trying to remember the parking count. I, Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we were at 20 or 25 spaces plus room for school bus parking and a bus turnaround. Um, so that's that's sort of the, that seems to be about the right balance point. Um, on high demand, sunny weekends or peak times, you know, that's where you will probably fill up that parking lot. But with parking, it's always tough. You know, you wanna, you wanna provide the adequate amount, but you also don't wanna be excessive. So you're creating more stormwater runoff and the heat island and all these other things. So um, again, we just went to the concept plan level, um, but that is about what we showed all together. Is um, there parking along Seneca Street? Like, can you park on the road there? I have the answer. Okay, um, <laughs> so like, I am really involved with the, so essentially right now, but the way it's laid out, not technically, but in the accordance of like the bike master plan, which mm -hmm. if the city of Buffalo actually implements uh, effectively, anyway, that would call for, the city has a plan of eventually extending that spike lanes past Southside Parkway okay. and into and through all the way basically until you actually get to the railroad crossing bridge. But basically if they did do that, then you would have street parking because it would be parking lane, bike lane, travel lane, travel lane, parking, uh, bike lane, parking lane. 
So yes, hopefully. That's great. And I hope so, because I think if we could have just some parking on that street, probably cars would go um, as slow as they would which is still too fast, but through my part of the neighborhood, they still go too fast, but it's still like a lot slower than compared to where uh, Wendy lives. She lives in closer, you live closer to like Southside Parkway. Um, so, you know, definitely need it to be slower. Yeah, we've definitely trying to be, trying to hit that balance with all of our Blue A sites. Like obviously what we want to do is bring people into the site but we don't want to increase traffic in the neighborhoods. We don't want to, you know, make them these massive parking lots, but how do you, you know, it, it's a balance between all of the projects. So you know, there are going to be some days, you know, th those random sunny Saturdays in Buffalo that it's just going to be a madhouse. And I think we just have to embrace that because the other 12 months, <laughs> literally minus one day, you know, people aren't going to be out there um, <laughs> jam packed, but it's bringing those people, it's bringing the neighborhood, but it's also bringing that second ring group of people to this park. Because the more people we have at the park, the more, you know, inviting it's going to be, in my opinion. And I think that's our goal with the Blue Way, you know, try to get people in there. You don't want to be walking on those paths all the way in the back and you know not knowing what's happening around you you know having people in the same general areas i think a really great thing but this is a very large park and we're only taking on this little bit so there is always going to be that area for the people who want to escape and just be by themselves it's going to be great so really appreciate that i know we had some other comments in the chat i don't know if anyone who sorry my cat is meowing behind me um, if anyone wants to, Daniel, do you have anything you want to speak on or Mary? We'd just love to hear your opinions. No, just very excited. We, uh, moved into the area not that long ago because there's a lot of development going on, uh, Seneca street. We have two small kids and we've went kayaking down there, but it's just, it's, They've done a lot of work recently too with the pathways, but mm -hmm. but it's it just looks awesome. We're really excited. Oh, that's great. I have a I have a uh, technical question, and it might be a little too early for this, but on the tree plantings and the um, uh, the slide that you had of the parking lot near Seneca Street, um, are the trees all going to be the same species or? Will you mix them up? Will there be different species for biodiversity? A mix of species. Yeah, we kind of look for disease and insect resilience right. and overall biodiversity. You know, we try not to go crazy with it. So we have some guidelines for maximum percentage of a single species in a planting. Oh, okay, but, good. But but yeah, it was, you know, we'll stress hardy native species and we'll definitely aim for a good level of diversity. Okay, good. All right. So they're not all going to be ash trees. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait to get my kayak out there. You let me know and I'll come with you. Okay. And Simon, I want to see your, your, your hauling system with a kayak behind your bike. I really would oh. love to see that. I'll take a video. I'll make a video. <laughs> you should. <laughs> when it happens, I actually don't even have a kayak yet. I just, I, I've done it with someone else's kayak. Yeah. You know, <laughs> life has to get in Someday. order first, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think if we don't have any more comments, um, we really appreciate all the feedback that you've given us. Um, I do also just want to mention that on May 8th, which is a Saturday, we are going to be doing a Seneca Bluffs walkabout. So uh, Waterkeeper will have a table um, at the park, at the entrance to the park, and we'll have the, the plans there available um, you know, people want to take a look at them again. And then if you are interested, we're happy, I'd be happy just to walk through the site with you and 
point out where some of the features are going to be going. Um, originally, when we were planning this public meeting, I said to Catherine, do you think we could have it on site? And she said, yeah, no, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Which, you know, it's a PowerPoint. It's a, we would have it would have been a different type of presentation, but I said, okay, well, we can still get people out there if they're interested. Um, so May 8th, we will be out at Seneca Bluffs. Um, please tell your neighbors, please tell your friends. I don't have a time yet, but I think if you come, you know, in late morning, early afternoon, we'll be there. So anytime between like 11 and one, we're going to be, we're going to be tabling. So please feel free. Like I said, spread the word. Um, we'd love to see people out there and love just to walk around the site with people. So just get that on your calendars. Um, I think parting words, thank you again for taking your Wednesday evening and hearing more about all the, the great work that's happening at Seneca Bluffs. We, we all really appreciate it. Uh, the folks at Waterkeeper, the county, our consultants, um, uh, Tom and Hannah and Ryan, you know, thank you so much for, for being a part of this call. And we are always available to continue hearing your feedback as time goes on. So um, I will, what's the best way? How you access this meeting on our website, I'll just put my contact information in there. And so you are, you know, more than welcome to to get in touch with me. I'll actually just put it here in the chat real quick too, so that you've got it. See if I can do also, two. this video will be posted on our website. Yes. And um, we do have the Waterkeeper website, and we also have a Buffalo Blue Way website. Um, so this meeting will be on there, and we also have social media pages for both. I think across every platform that could possibly be. <laughs> so if you're not following us, please do. Not only for just, you know, learning more about the projects, but mm -hmm. as the proceed, we're definitely going to be giving you updates. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you feel when you go to these public meetings, like, okay, I give my input and a year and a half from now, you have no idea what's happening, mm -hmm. trying to avoid that. So, yes. you know, feel free to reach out to us anytime via any of those channels as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're um, always available and happy to, available. happy to listen and, and happy to talk. We really like yeah. talking with people. We kind of miss it, I think, sometimes. And going out to the site, so. Oh, yeah, we really like doing that, too. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evenings. And hopefully I see some of you, all of you, out at Seneca Bluffs sometime soon. So thanks yeah. again. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.